Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Soon the film Amok will be playing in this area. Because of the nature of the film and the nudity and sexuality involved, we have made cuts in the coming attractions trailer that you are about to see. However, when Amok plays in this theater, you will see it complete with nothing cut out. Amok is the story of a sex-crazed madman. He lived on an isolated island where he lured beautiful girls. First, he only watched but then, he did much more. A few days before she disappeared, we couldn't help noticing a change had come over her. As if she were being tormented by something. There were always new victims for his depraved desires. Beautiful young faces and bodies who were thrown into an explosion of sexual frenzy by drugs they never knew they took. He forced them to do what he wanted. And he wanted everything. When he was finished ravaging their bodies, they disappeared forever. Strange. Fire that gives off no heat. <laughs> the game's over now. You must die. Take her. Amok is a movie so real, so mind-boggling, that you want to leave. <laughs> but you won't be able to. Hey, my friend Bernie, he told me this picture was strong. It's strong. What do I think of this picture? I think the people who did it ought to, they ought to be arrested. <laughs> what a picture. You know, and I, I don't see anything wrong with sex and nudity. I never saw so much sex and nudity in a movie. I can't believe it. They would put that on a screen. A muck. A film that had to wait for the permissive 1970s before it could be made. In the trailer you have just seen, we had to cut out certain parts because we cannot tell if there are children in our audience or those who would be offended or embarrassed by total nudity and sexuality. But when Amok plays in this area, you will see it in its complete version with nothing cut out.
and welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for this feature review. This is disc number 20 from the 88 Films Italian Collection series. We are looking at a muck from 1972. According to the blurb on the 88 Films website, it says her role as Miss Moneypenny in the lamentable James Bond spoof Casino Royale may have set hearts aflutter, but it was for her part in Italian classic shockers like Black Belly of the Tarantula and Don't Torture, a duckling that cemented Barbara Boucher's status as one of the most libaceous icons of Euro cult cinema. Happily, Silvio um. Amadio's saucy thriller Amok fits snugly into this giallo-centric category too. And here, Bushi stars as Greta, a nubile young secretary under the recent employment of the cravat-wearing Richard, played by Farley Granger of Rope. Partial to the occasional bout of swinging along with his wanton wife Eleonora, played by Rosa I can't see her name, Rosalba Neri from Slaughter Hotel, Richard also seems to harbour a dark secret, the mysterious whereabouts of his missing former assistant Sally, whom Greta knows very intimately indeed. With its blend of leering lens, slow motion sex scenes and slick spectacle, Amok is an erotically charged masterclass in murder and deception brought lovingly to life in high definition thanks to those lovable deviants at 88 films. The special features on the disc is a restored 2K from the original 35mm negative, uncompressed English audio, uncompressed Italian audio, English subtitles, an icon amok in an interview with Barbara Boucher, Barbara Boucher Q&A from the Festival of Fantastic Films in Manchester, um, and Death in Venice, an interview with Rosalba Neri, which is subtitled. Region locked uh, to region B. Uh, picture formats HD 1080p um, and the audio format is LPCM mono. Um, the language is English and Italian with newly translated English subtitles. And the movie's about an hour and a half long. So this is a first time viewing for me and I will go on record. By God, am I glad that I waited to watch this movie. I think had I saw this... Um, even five or six years ago when I was like really starting the journey into into my, my longing for giallo uh, in Italian cinema, I probably wouldn't have appreciated the craft going on here. I would have looked at it, which I imagine a lot of people look at it, with this kind of leady-eyed, sleazy attitude towards the, the kind of sexual content and the nudity and would have missed the nuance in the movie. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there isn't a ton of fucking nudity in this movie. Lesbianism runs a riot, uh, and there's a lot of um, a lot of female nudity, a lot of touching, a lot of lens, slow motion craft, um, and woozy dreaminess, but I think those just fit the movie really, really well. It's weird to describe um, what we have. Let's let's do the synopsis. Well, let's do a better plot synopsis and then let's jump back to talk about the craft in this movie. So, basically, we have Greta who arrives. She's going to be this new secretary working under this guy called Richard. Richard lives in a mansion, um, has a sexually charged and slightly dark-sided uh, wife, Eleonora, who appears to suffer some kind of psychological uh, dissonance where she uh, can be very caring and very wanting one second and then not bipolar but at the, uh, at the flip of a switch has this really dark evil side in her that kind of craves violence. Um, Greta's there, we think at first to work for Richard but we find it very quickly she's investigating the disappearance of Sally who was Richard's former assistant uh, and also Greta's lesbian lover. So she's working in there to try and uncover the mystery. Whilst there, she is drugged, um, brought into many different sexual acts with many other people, bit of swinging going on, and um, starts to unpack what has happened to Sally. Now, we'll see, hopefully you are listening to this having seen the movie, because kind of going to spoil the ending because I fucking love the ending of this movie. This is like a Jallo ending but not as you know it and that it's kind of bonkers, kind of batshit but at the same time delivers one of those kind of last minute reveals where you're like, oh, right, I see what you did there. 
Um, so yeah, we find out during this that they have a gardener. The gardener is mentally deficient, but um, is apparently very strong, very, very, very strong, and very attractive. And he was brought into one of these sex acts at one point and um, accidentally strangled Sally to death. Uh, Richard and Eleanor are covered up. Uh, Greta, who is trying to get to the bottom of it at one point, um, I want to say flirts, but it's not as forceful as that. Uh, shows an act of kindness to the gardener, um, which will play an important point later on, because as... Um, as Greta gets more and more involved with the mystery, she starts to find out what has actually happened. And Eleanor and Richard decide that what they're going to do is they are going to kill off uh, the people involved uh, and get away with the perfect murder by kind of really setting up this scenario again of the, this kind of gardener guy, you know, murdering off Greta in a similar act as before. Um, and the, the stage is all set for this to happen except the gardener remembers the kindness that Greta showed them uh, and then turns thus killing um, Eleonora and Richard and then um, Greta kind of escapes in the knowledge that they have found the body of of Sally which has been buried out in the kind of the kind of marshy moorlands um, and we kind of think that's the mystery solved but what I love about this is at the very end the police say that the, bo the body they found is not Sally's at all so Greta has went through this great mystery and knows that her love has died and feels that everything is vindicated and in the final shot it's revealed that she doesn't know where the body of Sally is and whether or not ultimately whether or not that actually happened at all um, I think it's I think it's kind of I've read a lot of complaints online where people are like, well, it's a kind of really simplistic story, isn't it? And I, I can't disagree with you. It really is, actually. On, on its basic level, it is a very kind of paint-by-numbers jalo script. In fact, if anything, it's less confusing than the majority of uh, jalo mysteries that are out there. Other complaints I've read are, you know, does this movie really quantify as being a Jallo? Yes, it's a murder mystery, but by 72, Jallo's had a touch of danger about them, and this one doesn't really have that. If anything, it feels like a kind of erotic thriller, um, unless, like, the the Jallo that we know, the kind of template that Argento sets out. You can also see that as well, coming from the fact that there's very little blood and very little death in this movie overall. And I, I'll take that on board uh, as well. I would counter by saying that this is definitely a Jallo. The reason it's definitely a Jallo is that it, well, one, is definitely a murder mystery. And whilst we're not seeing black glove killers and, and all the rest, there is still this idea of uh, a murder, someone being there to solve it and getting caught up in a mystery much deeper than they expect when they start. Um, there is a bit of death and violence towards the end, which I quite like, and there is this kind of mysterious reveal of of what actually happened to the body to begin with. Yes, it does have a lot of eroticism in it. I will be lying to you if I did not say there is a huge degree of titillation that comes from not only seeing uh, Rosa, Rosa... I can't say her name. Rosalba Neri and um, Barbara Bushy to extremely beautiful women in their what can only be described as their prime bearing all for the camera there is a whole lot of Barbara Boucher in this movie just dear god almighty her and a uh, Edwidge and the same movie might be the end of my you know I might stroke it so hard I go blind in one eye that's all I'm saying that is all I'm saying but she's a great actress I mean it's easy to sit there and say well look at the body you know she just gets her tits out she just gets her body out but I think she's a great actress I think she's, there, there's a very powerful on-screen presence that she has even clothed um I mean it's no secret that to me Barbara Boucher will always be um synonymised on-screen and her performance in Don't Torture a Duckling, which I think is, I'd like, maybe Filch's best movie and maybe her best role. Um, but I think she plays it really well. I love how uh, kind of malicious and moustache twiddling Eleonora is as a character. I think that works great. Um, it's shot beautifully. The restoration on this one, the 2K restoration, is fucking gorgeous to look at. Colours are crisp. There's that 70s kind of smoky edge through it. And the way the movie's shot as well as this kind of almost weird dreamlike 
offset. It kind of reminded me of the kind of soft tones of Lado's Short Night of Glass Dolls. It just kind of feels a little bit removed. Also, at the same time, the kind of the vibe of something like Don't Look Now. It's kind of dreamlike beauty in the way the camera is used. The cinematography is wonderful to look at. And that's before we even start talking about the motherfucking soundtrack, ladies and gents. Uh, Teo Usili. I think that's how you pronounce his name, probably isn't. Um, does a wonderful job on the score here. It's it's kind of psychedelic, it's twisty, it's erotic, it's dreamlike. Um, it's a beautiful soundtrack that just woozes its way, uh, kind of meanders just gently through the, 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 the film movie itself. So it's wonderful. And I'll give him his credit, Silvio Amadio's uh, direction is the fucking tits. He does a lot here. Yes, you could argue it's very leery, and I would once again not disagree with that. It's a leery, leery, leery movie, but he handles it with a bit of class, uh, which I think is want. Um, and a lot of directors from this time period is what separates the Italian exploitation genre from the American exploitation genre. In America, it's used for titillation and, and you know, like, full-on effect. Whereas in Italy, there's something very artistic about the craft, which, I mean, still delivers the same results, but there's a, almost this degree of maturity about how nudity is handled on the screen and I think it's wonderful to watch in this movie. I think it, it works really, really, really well. Uh, this is a movie that I had been waiting years to tick off my list, ladies and gents. Years and years. Uh, very much aware of how it looks, very much aware of its kind of very bright yellow, bright yellow colour um, cover. The, the poster stuck with me for a while when I started really first kind of delving into... Uh, Jallo. This was one that always came up in discussion, but it's one that, I mean, I've owned this DVD, well, Blu-ray, for about two and a half years now and never watched it. Uh, and it's me finally getting to watch it and I can tell you right now, I feel that I was in the right place for it. I, I genuinely think this is a fucking great movie. Um, one that kind of needs to be seen. You need to tick this off your list if you're interested in any of the, the Italian collection ones. This is a high recommend from me. Um, one that kind of floored me and just one that had me captivated from start to end. When it comes to grades for a muck from 1972, this one gets a 4.5 out of 5 for me. I think it's great. It's a bit light on story at times, but what it doesn't have there, it makes up with with really beautiful cinematography, uh, really good acting, and a story that I think is still twisty. It will keep you going right to the very end. So yeah, this is a 4.5 for me. Well done, the 88 films. You have, you're have you redeeming the, the other weeks that I have to do these slasher movies by giving me truly phenomenal movies. I really, really, really enjoyed this one uh, and hopefully you have as well. 